Today, I wanna to share with you how I build a historical timeline inside of Notion. This is something I've wanted to do for a long time, but haven't been able to achieve until the recent grouping update. I won't be using the timeline database view because of some limitations, but rather I'll be using the board view. I'll be using formulas and of course the grouping feature. But before we get started, I want to remind you that I just released a 2022 Notion template. What this includes is a pre-filled template with dates from January 1st to December 31st, 2022 to help you build and plan for next year. I'll be sharing how I'm using that blank template in the coming weeks. Anyway, let's get right into how to build a historical timeline inside of Notion. This page will be available down below to duplicate and to follow along. So the first one I wanna look at is how to arrange a historical timeline just with a simple date property. This table is providing some basic properties. Let's take a look at one of them. We have the historical event title at the top, a date property, which can be arranged in both a single date and a date range. We also have a description property, which is just a text property, a cover image property, this will allow you to add images to your timeline. This is using a files and media property and also a show checkbox. This is indicating that you want to show this event on your timeline. So with just these basic properties, let's create a timeline. Let's add a new board view, call it board, create, and it's gonna give us a new status property. Um, we're gonna go ahead and delete that in a moment, but first I want to group. So let's go to group, and I want to group by date. Upon clicking date, I'm gonna choose year. From here, what I wanna do is hide empty groups, make sure that I am sorting chronologically. You can also choose reverse. And I could also color columns, which just gives me a light color in the background. And there it is, a pretty easy way to create a timeline. And you have all of your years at the top. This can of course get very hard to look at when you add more and more years. Let's figure out how we can minimize everything. But first let's go to properties and see what we can do about each one of these cards. First of all, I don't wanna see the show checkbox. I do wanna see the date and I do wanna see the description. Let's actually delete this status property as well. So in order to minimize this, the first thing I could do was create a filter and say show contains checked. Another thing I could do, if we go back to table, you'll notice that some of these titles say, for example, historical event A and then A1, A2, A3, and A4. So let's assume A1 to A4 are actually sub-events of historical event A. To connect those events, you have to create a relation property. So let's add a new property called sub-events and make it a relation. I'm going to search for the database I'm currently in. Historical timeline and I am in date year. Sync both ways, and it should give me another relation property. I'm going to rename this parent event. So every time I add a new sub event, let's choose A1. If I navigate to A1, the parent event should show up as historical event A. I've gone ahead and added all of the sub events for every parent historical event. Let's go back to the table and then properties. I want to show sub events. Now I can see all of the events that I want to see in my timeline, plus all of their sub events inside of the card to quick reference. Let's look at another way to view these timelines. The next may be viewing all of these events by month. And this will be by month and year. This is the same table we were just working with. Let's add another view for board, call it board. And whenever you create a new board, you're going to have a group by status. Of course, we're going to delete that eventually, but first let's group by date 
and make sure this time it's by month. This is also really nice if you're trying to create timelines with your task management system. Inside of group, I also want to hide empty groups. I could do the same thing in properties where I don't see certain elements in here. Maybe I don't wanna see the date in this instance and just the description. The next one we can take a look at is how to create timelines based off of centuries. So if you have large swaths of dates and time ranges, this one is really useful. So we have all of the same properties, except now we have an additional one. We have a formula called started. So this is still using a date property where I'm grabbing the first year that this event started. And to do that, you're just going to use this very simple formula, which is year and in parentheses, the date property. And you can just click it. And that will always give you that first year. Let's go ahead and create that board view and group by started. So you can group by formulas. Now I'm gonna group by the year zero up to this year, 2021. And I'm going to group every 100 years. So that'll give you centuries. I'm also going to hide empty groups. Let's go ahead and adjust these properties as well. Another thing I could do is show the cover image wherever it applies. So I can go to properties, go to card preview and select cover. And that'll give me all of my images. I can also show sub events and filter to only see everything with the check mark show. Here's another way we can view a timeline like this. Let's look at historical timeline date year and month. So this is identical to the other table we just looked at with a started formula and a date property. I want to add one more property called month. So let's go to formula and use the function format date. And in these parentheses, click date, comma, and in quotes, four capital M's. And that'll give us the month. So what I want to do from here is create that board view again. This time I'm going to group by year. Again, hiding empty groups. Quickly clean up these cards, go to a subgroup, and I want a subgroup by month. And I can choose exact. Hide empty groups. So for example, the year 1021. Under March, there are two events. So if you want to sort these months in the appropriate order, you'll have to go to subgroup, go to sort, and instead of alphabetical, manual. And you'll have to manually sort these. Just like that. And you can toggle each month to close all of the contents inside. So that's every way we can design a historical timeline using a date property. Now there are other ways we can create these timelines without a date property, like this example here. The table looks a little bit different. So instead of having a date property, we have a year or a year range. So let's create a property to grab the first year in that string. So started and make it a formula. And with this formula, we'll be able to create a timeline that is compatible with years before year one. And that is signaled with BC, like this historical event here. So the first thing we wanna do is say if contains within a year range right here, BC, then I want to do the following. Otherwise do this. So we'll just keep it as that for now. Let's just create another test property. Test make it a formula. 
we can use the replace all function and say replace all characters that come after this dash. I want all those characters to disappear. So replace everything in year range, comma, replace this with that. So within these quotes, I want to replace everything after that dash. So I'm gonna say dash dot star. And that will give me 1818. If I were to bring this dash to the other side of the dot star, it will give me the last. Now let's turn this into a number. So two number and wrap that around with parentheses. So what if there is a year before year one? I want to turn this into a negative number. To do that, I'm gonna say unary minus and wrap it around this statement, unary minus. So let's copy this. And in started, if contains BC, let's replace these quotes with this and the false condition. So if it's not the case that BC is in year range, I'm just going to copy everything within unary minus like that and replace zero with it. So that'll give me a positive number whenever there isn't a BC. So now that I have this, I can go and create that timeline board and group again by started. Except this time I can go negative 2000 or however far back you wanna go to the year 2000. And then I can group every 100 years. Go to group and hide empty groups. And there you have it. Clean up the properties again. Filter out to just see what I want to show. And see sub events. And that is how you create a timeline with just a string or a text property. Formulas, of course, will be available to copy and paste down in the description. Let's take a look at another way to visualize everything. So this is the exact same thing we just made, except I also showed the cover image in card preview. So what if I also want to see all of the timeline events that are not clicked show? I can then subgroup by the show checkbox. So the top, I want to see everything that's checked and at the bottom, everything that is unchecked. I can also adjust this filter and remove it. And it will give me, let me just zoom out one time. It'll give me all of the other events. In this case, because a lot of these are just the sub events of these up here, I can maybe hide sub events. Again, we're sorting by date ascending, or in this case, started ascending, which leads us to my personal use case. That's labeled right here as Red's historical timeline. This is how I like to arrange my timelines. I have negative years included, and I am nesting my subgroups in the cards, and I'm grouping by century. However, I'm not taking that string property, that year range text property, I'm using the title. So that's giving me even less properties, which I do enjoy. So I have historical event A, and instead of having a text property 1818 through 1940, I put it right here in the title between parentheses. And to grab the first year in that range, I'm using this crazy formula here where I'm using regular expressions. This will be available to copy and paste again down below where I'm isolating all characters within any parentheses in the title. And then I'm grabbing that first year. And again, arranging it into a board view. Now, what I like about this is that when I view these subgrouped sub events, inside the card, I can also see their date range or their year range, right? It makes it a lot easier to view. 
So I wanted to share that with you guys because it's something that I've been using a lot lately and it's something I've talked about a lot on this channel, wanting timelines like this. Of course, there is a timeline database view that Notion has, but it is limited in that it's better used for task management. It's better used for dates that lie within at the very most the same year or the same couple years. But if you're working with dates that span decades, centuries, it's going to be a lot harder to visualize that timeline with that database view. So I recommend using something like this. Let's just go right into the outro. I hope this was helpful for anyone seeking an alternative way to create timelines like a historical timeline we just built. Um, also, I will be releasing a Notion course next Monday. I didn't specify what type of course this was going to be in last week's video. It is going to be a Notion formula course. So it's going to be all about formulas and how to use them. And not just formulas, also how to use formulas with other features and when and when not to use them as well. So look out for that and follow me on Twitter for all updates. I will see you guys next week with a new video. We'll see you then.